Morning Super Sentence Stackers, I'm Jane Considine and welcome to the English Writing Classroom. We're going to do some writing today and I'm going to be your teacher. I'm going to do some demonstration writing so I can really help you craft and construct some sentences. And what we're going to do is work together to write the nation's story. It is really important, everybody, that when we write a story collaboratively, that we all play our part, but we've got to stay in our chosen chunk. Now, today's film is The Lucky Dip, and it's in the description below. And I've put it there for you to watch. And it's a great film. This film is set in the seaside and um, Lola's at the seaside, but it's a really windy day and a storm is brewing and then the storm breaks. And Lola is really intrigued by an arcade and in particular, something in the arcade has caught her eye. There is a claw machine and there's something in the claw machine that Lola really wants. Now, what we're going to do is together across the whole country, in fact, across the whole world, we are going to write a global story and we're going to write it in a third person narrative. This means, actually, we need to agree character names. Our character names today are going to be Lola. She's our main character. There's Gran and Grandad, but also there is a stranger. And our story is going to reveal what happens and what the stranger does with Lola. Okay. Now, we're going to move to writing part of the story and I want to show you the chunk that I've chosen. I've downloaded the form Choose Your Chunk and I know the exact times, they are below in the description, that I'm going to write within. Mrs C needs you to stay within your times so I can sew the precious parts together to make a story. My chosen chunk is going to be chunk five. Now, to be a super sentence stacker, you have to write or try your best to write nine sentences. I'm going to show you now some sentences that are going to go towards my nine. And um, I've got three writing challenges. I'm now going to do some demonstration writing. And when I do some demonstration writing, you're going to see inside my thinking. You're going to see the writer's brain at work. I'm going to articulate out loud my thinking process as a writer. Let's look at what today's writing challenges are. The first one is all about the sense of sound. We're going to put lots of noises in this story and that is going to heighten reader engagement. The second aspect we're going to have a go at doing is we're going to write a passive voice sentence. Passive voice is really interesting. It's where the person doing the action is hidden from the writer. Sometimes they're completely hidden and sometimes they're an afterthought. But we're going to try and do some passive voice writing. And the third writing challenge is about adverbs. And in particular, we're going to look at a how adverb and we're going to see how it moves around. But don't worry, I'm here to help you. I've watched the film The Lucky Dip and I'm writing chunk five now when Lola decides when the storm breaks to seize her moment and run back to the arcade. So first 
thing I'm going to think about is the sounds at the fairground and it's moved from a wild wind now into the storm. I want to show the reader I'm thinking about all the noises in this story so I'm trying to think of a word that could evoke a collection of sounds. Mm. What about orchestra? That's a really good word. I'm going to do some thesaurus thinking now. I'm going to jot that word down. Um, orchestra, that coming together of lots of sounds. Um, another word uh, that could represent a collision of noises could be cacophony. Oh, that's a really grown up word, Mrs. C. I'm going to write that down. And all of these words are in the same synonym family. Another word could be symphony. I think I'm going to use the word symphony. A symphony of sounds. When I say that out loud, it sounds really positive that actually a storm, if you've gone to the seaside for the sun, is quite negative. So I'm just going to darken this further with an adjective. A symphony of dark sounds collided together in the sky, crashed together in the sky. I like colliding. Uh, a symphony of dark sounds collided. I don't think I need together. I'm going to do a live edit there. A symphony of dark sounds collided in the sky. And I'm going to think now of all the parts of the storm that are noisy. The wind, the thunder, the rain. And I'm going to introduce this like a list, like a power of three. The wind, the thunder, the rain. When I want to introduce three things together like a list, I can use a very important punctuation mark. I'm going to use a colon. I am going to now place an adjective between and just before each of these nouns. So, Let's think about the wind. I could have wild wind, but I really want the sound to come through. Whipping wind. Um, I want the sound to be even louder than that. Um, I'm going to do this. Would it be better to put it as an adjective before, or would it be better to create some movement with verbs? I think with verbs. It'll come to life more. I'm going to do this. Wind howled. Oh, I like that word. It sounds like wolves. Wind howled. Um, I'm going to now um, introduce the thunder. Thunder, really noisy, boomed. I'm going to put a comma there. And then, um, what am I? Well, I, I think I'm going to introduce the last one with an and, and um, rain crashed. Oh, that's really good negative intent and the power of three there listed straight after the colon. Okay, my next writing challenge is all about the passive voice and now I want to capture the part of the film where there's that wonderful looking down, zoom out moment of all the umbrellas. Because those seaside visitors really haven't had a sunny day at all. Now, when you write in the passive voice, we're going to hide or have it as an afterthought, the doer of the action. So we're just going to have these objects pop up. And the objects that are popping up are the umbrellas. OK, um, let's start with the umbrellas. I'm going to write them here. Um, umbrellas 
urgently, oh I do like that adverb, urgently, um, unfolded, because they're all, and that's a lovely way to start that. Using the passive voice, we don't know who is opening the umbrellas. Umbrellas urgently unfolded. But I don't want to lose the reader. I, I am going to still write in the passive voice, but I'm going to put the doers of the action at the end. And one of the big clues that you're writing in the passive voice is you use the word by. Umbrellas urgently unfolded by the seaside visitors. But they're not very happy. And I need to tell the reader that. So I'm going to put by the seaside visitors um, and then I'm going to think about some adjectives I could put just before here to show that they are unhappy, that the weather is bad. OK. Oh, my wiper. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Right. Here we go. My first idea is complaining. The complaining seaside visitors. But I want to do some thesaurus thinking now and consider other words in this synonym family. The disgruntled. Oh, that's a good word. The disgruntled seaside visitors. I could have disappointed. Yes, they would be fed up if they've travelled all that way and they can't use their buckets and spades. Um, I really like disgruntled. I'm going to choose that word in the story by disgruntled seaside visitors. This is my final writing challenge and I'm going to now have a look at building a sentence with an adverb. Okay, and I'm going to use in particular a how adverb that ends in ly. And there's something really interesting with a how adverb. Um, you can often move them about in a clause that you have written. I want now uh, to put Lola at the heart of this story. But before I move on, I'm going to go back and reread my work. A symphony of dark sounds collided in the sky. Wind howled, thunder boomed and rain crashed. Umbrellas urgently unfolded now. Umbrellas were urgently unfolded by disgruntled seaside visitors. Umbrellas were urgently, let's put that there. It's really important that we reread. Umbrellas were urgently unfolded by disgruntled, oh, we don't need this now by disgruntled seaside visitors. That reads much better. It's really important that you go back and reread your work. Umbrellas urgently, do we need the were? Umbrellas urgently unfolded. Oh, I think it might even sound better now we've got rid of that the like this. Umbrellas urgently unfolded by disgruntled seaside visitors. Really crucial when you're in the moment of writing. Sometimes you need to go back, reread, check and change to ensure that your writing flows. What we're going to do now is think about an adverb and we're going to have an adverb that is the how type of adverb that ends in L-Y. I'm now going to put Lola at the heart of this story. She is our central character. So here we go. 
Lola. And I want this sense, because of the storm, she sees her opportunity. So I'm going to actually use that verb seized. Seized her moment. Because she's a little bit naughty, isn't she? Running off from Gran and Grandad. Lola seized her moment to return back to the arcade. To return back to the arcade. Now, I want the reader to know uh, that she has been a little bit cheeky. And I'm going to introduce that idea with these three adverbs. I'm going to do some thesaurus thinking and these three adverbs are all on the same synonym family. So the first word I'm thinking of is brazenly because she is quite cheeky and that means that actually uh, in this synonym family. Um, blatantly, blatantly, oh yes, um, obviously. Now, I think that word would be less effective here because it depends on her personality. I think these hint that at this moment in the story, she's been a little bit cheeky. So I'm going to take this adverb here, brazenly. OK, let's go back to the sentence. Lola seized her moment to return back to the arcade, brazenly, ignoring the keep out sign, because it's clear, it's in capitals, but she just runs in. Brazenly ignoring, and because it's actually in the film, I'm going to put it into inverted commas there, the keep out sign. What is wonderful about adverbs is that you can move them about in clause. So I could have ignoring brazenly the keep out sign. I could have ignoring the keep out sign brazenly. And so all of these, oh, I forgot to finish off my inverted commas there. These adverbs are really mobile and can move within clauses, but I think I'm going to leave mine there. I'm now going to reread my work from the beginning, looking for spelling mistakes or little things I want to change. A symphony of dark clouds collided in the sky. Wind howled, thunder boomed and rain crashed. Umbrellas urgently unfolded by disgruntled seaside visitors. Lola seized her moment to return back to the arcade, brazenly ignoring the keep out sign. I'm pleased with that. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to make sure you watch the film. I, I want you to find your chunk. It's really important that you write within your time chunk so that I can sew all your precious pieces of writing together into the nation's story. Now, there are three more vital things that are required. Number one, when you do your writing, tell me which chunk you are writing for. Every film is cut into nine bite-sized pieces. And so write on your piece of paper, chunk one, two, three or seven. The second thing is, I need you to have your name on that piece of paper so I can celebrate your writing and show off to everybody around the world what you have crafted and constructed. It's also really handy for me if you tell me your age. Thank you, Super Sentence Stackers. And remember, hashtag 
super sentence stacking, like and subscribe in the details below. You can get hold of us on Twitter. You can send your work into Facebook at The Training Space. And remember, show the world your writing. And I will see you back to hear the nation's story at 3.30. Your deadline to get the writing into me is 12.30. And at 3.30 for story time, I'm going to give you another little challenge. Can you find your slippers? Because I'll have my slippers on to read the nation's story. Thank you.